Hi, I'm Chad from Chaotix. Today on the proverbial line, we've got a special guest. David Spinks is the VP of community at Bevy and the co-founder of CMX. CMX is the community for community professionals. They're dedicated to training, support, and networking for individuals working in the community ecosystem. Every year, they publish the Community Industry Report, which surveys hundreds of community professionals and allows them to keep their finger on the pulse of the industry. I've got David here to talk to me about the findings from that report. Welcome, David. Thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. So um, what are the three most important takeaways from this year's report? Yeah, there's a lot of really interesting things from this year. It's hard to pick just three. Um, I think that three things that really stood out to me. One is uh, that community investment is growing. So we have a lot of really good data now that companies are investing more into community than they were in the past. So 69% said they plan on increasing their investment in the next year and 85% found that community positively impacted their objectives in the last year. And what was interesting is that COVID actually accelerated investment in community. So some, some people might've had a narrative that because of COVID and layoffs that companies were investing less, but it turns out that they're investing more because of COVID and a lot of companies started paying attention to their online community programs when they had to move everything into virtual spaces. And 56% uh, said that their leadership considered community to be more essential since the start of the pandemic. So just seeing that big investment is really, um, really exciting. Uh, another big insight is that virtual events are here to stay. So another huge narrative around COVID is everyone had to switch to virtual events and bring all their community online, but maybe it's just a stopgap until, you know, until we can meet in person again and then everyone will switch back. But it turns out that they're here to stay. 80% um, of community teams are now hosting more virtual events than they were before the pandemic. 80% said that it became a more critical part of their entire business strategy now, so it's becoming ingrained in their plans. 49% said that their community has been positively impacted because they offer more virtual events. So this narrative that like, oh, virtual events, everyone's exhausted, no one really likes virtual events, turns out that's not really true. Most community teams found that adding virtual events into the mix actually benefited their community. And 59% said they plan on hosting the same amount or more events after the pandemic. So they're planning on increasing how many virtual events they host. Uh, so that's here to stay either as dedicated virtual events or what a lot of people are talking about as hybrid events. Um, but pretty interesting to see. I think that's going to just continue to be a staple for community teams now. Um, and then the last big insight is on the DEI front. This is the first year we asked about DEI initiatives and we asked about race and ethnicity within the community industry. So we got some pretty interesting benchmarks that we can continue to use now in future years, but already got some really interesting insights. Um, and there's it's just clear that there's a lot of work still to be done. So 79% said that they believe their organizations should take a public stance on DEI issues, but when George Floyd was murdered this year and there were a lot of protests, only 47% of those community teams took a stance within their community on Black Lives Matter. Um, only 51% of community teams have a DEI policy in place right now. And of those who don't, of that 49% who don't, only 34% are actually planning to create one right now. And the rest either aren't planning to do that or they just don't know if they're planning on doing it. And so a lot of room for bringing in more consistent policies there. Um, and then looking at the actual industry itself, 68% of community professionals on a global level uh, identify as white. In Europe, that's 77%. In the US, it's 75%. So like many other industries in technology, community is, is largely dominated by people who identify as white. And so there's a lot more room for making sure that we're building a diverse industry itself. Mm -hmm. Tons of really interesting stuff there and a lot of valuable information for kind of community teams, no matter kind of how, how small or, or big or the organization that they're serving uh, is. If there was kind of a, uh, one of maybe one of those stats or another stat that you think uh, stands out as an indication of the direction that the, the industry is going as a whole, um, what would that, what would that be? Yeah. So 
you know, I think I think those do speak to the direction, especially uh, around, you know, how they're planning on investing in community and growing that investment. But I think one thing that I always look for as a really good measure of how our industry is maturing is headcount. So it's one thing for companies to say we're investing in community and add it to their marketing and, you know, use the term a lot. It's very hot right now and buzzy. But, you know, I always ask, like, well, show me the receipts. Like, how many actual community professionals do you have on staff? How senior are they? Um, how are you investing in community? And there's a lot of really good news on that front this year. So 67% of organizations had at least two full-time employees on their community team, which was up from 57% in 2019, just a year ago. 9% have 11 or more full-time employees on their community team, which was up from 7% in 2019. And then this is probably the biggest that 88% of organizations have at least one dedicated community manager on their team, which was up from just 71% in 2017 when we did that research a few years ago. So we're seeing companies build their teams and hire and put more staff there, which is huge because we know one of the biggest challenges that community teams face is just they don't have bandwidth and resources and the company isn't you know growing the team. They just expect a solo community manager or a part time. You know, it's like hand it to the social media person and have them also do community or something. It looks like we're finally moving past those days and companies are really building out their teams. That's fantastic. Um, you've obviously been doing this research since, as you mentioned, since 2017, so a number of years now. Um, what's been the most surprising change you've witnessed over the years? You know, I, I think like, honestly, what's more, more, most surprising is what hasn't changed. Um, it's like we see the same challenges showing up time and time and time again for community professionals, you know, it's always like quantifying the value and and driving community engagement. Those are always the top two. And we still like really running into that challenge of how do we measure the value of our work? Despite, you know, I've been in this industry for 11 years and there's a lot of progress being made. We have a lot of really good data that we're, we're making big improvements, but it, it's just like that's still our number one challenge. Um, and I think another interesting to see is that the community tech space is still just a, a blue ocean of opportunity. Like no one community platform has really become, you know, the staple of the industry. The most common platforms that community teams are using are still Facebook groups and Slack, which neither of which were built for businesses or have business tools or actually help you track your data or do anything that an actual business needs to do to actually solve that problem we just talked about of measuring the value. And so we had over a hundred different platforms as write-in options in the research this year. And 56% of the respondents said that they were only somewhat or not satisfied with their community platform right now, which is mind blowing to me. Like, you know, for an industry that's been around this long, there's just clearly a lot of opportunity for specialization in the space and for, um, community platforms to keep evolving. So um, interesting to see. I'm, I'm very excited to see how the tech ecosystem uh, develops over the next few years. Mm -hmm. I think even on to that point, I mean, you've got technology that can help boost engagement, of course, and, and can help with metrics. Um, but even just seeing the number of organizations that now have a, a full-time community manager those people are gonna get better and better and better at their jobs. Now that there's more organizations that have somebody who's committed to that full time. So while the tech is important, you can have great tech and, and a community manager that isn't equipped in the right way, and, and they're not gonna be able to drive engagement or those metrics that they need to anyway. So I feel like it's the two working together. That, that's a great point also that, you know, for software platforms, and you know this, working with a software platform, like you have to focus on the buyer at the end of the day and and solve for their problems and make sure that you are speaking their language. And, and the buyer for a lot of community tools has been like the head of marketing or the head of support. It hasn't been a dedicated community leader, a senior level community leader, because there just haven't 
been as many senior level community people. It's, it's they've been more junior. So I think that's spot on as more community professionals move up that ladder and become more senior and become decision makers and buyers, then community platforms will really be able to gear it towards what community teams need, what the community professional needs, and we'll start to see that satisfaction go up because I, I think that's just still a disconnect when the buyer is is not necessarily who's using the tool and that creates a disconnect between what the tool actually does and what it's bought for. Yeah, absolutely. And if those people aren't live in community, they're not in the community on a regular basis, they're probably not focused on serving those members. And if you don't have those members being served in the right way, they're not going to come back and you're not going to be able to drive any of your metrics. So, I mean, totally makes sense. Um, obviously, one of the things that you're committed to uh, as an organization, uh, CMX is committed to advancing the community profession. Um, kind of based on uh, the, the numbers and, and based on your experience, what would be kind of the, the big recommendation that you would make to a community manager, for example, or a community director to get that seat at the proverbial uh, kind of more senior table? Yeah, so we, we have six recommendations in the report at the end of the report uh, based on the research. So I highly recommend downloading it um, and checking those out. But I think the key thing is really trying to identify that gap that's preventing you from being able to tie community back to business objectives. And and so there's, there's, there's interesting data there this year. So we ask what are the top metrics that you focus on in order to measure impact for the organization? And so we ask community teams, what do they measure? And the top two metrics are active users and new members, right? So how many new members do we bring in and how engaged they are? And then we ask them, what are the metrics that leadership cares most about? And the top two are new customers and retained customers. So you're just seeing this disconnect where community teams are, are measuring and focused on community metrics and leadership cares about business metrics. Um, and so we need to close that gap. And we asked how many of you are comfortable or, or confident in your ability to measure the financial business value of community. And only 12% said that they are confident that they can measure that value right now. Um, and so that's the biggest gap and Brian Oblinger said it really well. There's a quote from him in the, in the research, like this is our opportunity, right? The community has never had this much interest and investment and awareness and buzz. Like every company is investing in community. First round capital publisher 2019 study a year ago that said 80% of startups are investing in community and 28% consider it their moat and critical to their success. So like, this is our moment. Like everyone's like interested, but now we have to really ensure that community becomes a staple in the business and isn't just a flash in the pan kind of trend. And we do that by tying community back to business objectives, really understanding what are the things that leadership cares about and making sure that we're tracking the metrics that speak to those objectives so that they can with confidence say, yes, we invested in community and we saw a really great return for our business as a result. That's how community is going to get a seat at the table. That's how it's going to grow in this world of business. Love it. That's awesome. Uh, last question. You've written a book, I believe, which is super awesome and it's coming out soon. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what it's about and, and why everybody needs it on their bookshelf? Yeah, sure. So this is a good tee up from all the things we just talked about because the book is essentially written to solve these exact problems. Um, it's called The Business of Belonging, How to Make Community Your Competitive Advantage. And so it just literally goes through a collection of everything I've learned from 11 plus years of building community for business and interviewing hundreds of people in, in how they built community at their business. And I've trained thousands of companies now. Um, and it, it's all about how to identify the objectives that community is driving for your business, getting language around why community is important and a really critical part of business, identifying the specific metrics that you can tie back to those objectives, and then takes you through the whole process of how to design a community strategy, how to actually build community and drive engagement and get people involved, um, all the way into like the daily in the weeds, like how do you actually get people to show up in a space and participate and create a, re a really strong sense of shared identity uh, within your community. So it's kind of my complete playbook for how to be successful at doing this work. 
Awesome. Sounds like a little bit of an industry Bible. So, I mean, sounds like a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of that. I hope so. <laughs> when does it when does it come out? When when can we get it? Uh, March 23rd. Awesome. Perfect. Um, well, David, thank you so much for taking the time today to, to join us. Um, uh, if people want to get the report, download it and, and read it, I know it's an awesome read. The team has done an amazing job putting all of this research together into a really beautiful and, and readable format. Um, uh, where, can, where can people find it? Yeah, just go to cmxhub.com and you'll find it right there on the homepage and it's in our resources section. You'll, you'll see it all around there. Um, you can also, I, I tweet a lot of insights from it. Uh, I'm at David Spanks on Twitter, so you can follow us there. Um, and yeah, we're doing more events. We're going to be publishing more articles that are going deeper into different parts of the research and kind of fleshing out the different insights that came out of it. So lots more to come. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I uh, really appreciated your, your insights and, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks so much for having me. For more videos and interviews like this one, subscribe to our YouTube channel or find us at chaortics.com.